That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Wicked Little Letters, the third film directed by Thea Sherrock, which premiered at the 2023 Toronto International Film Festival. It is being released courtesy of Sony Pictures Classics on April 5th, 2024. Do you know this director's other films? No, Me Before You and uh, another one called The One and Only Ivan, neither of which I've seen. What is Wicked Little Letters about? When people in Little Hampton, including conservative local Edith, begin to receive letters full of hilarious profanities, rowdy Irish migrant Rose is charged with the crime, suspecting that something is amiss the town's women investigate. What's your pull quote? An interesting footnote of female misbehavior not nearly as wicked as it should be, Coleman and Buckley elevate a sometimes hokey approach on the subjugation of women. This is based on a true story. And I'm assuming very loosely based, yeah. So it's 1920s in England, and Olivia Coleman plays Edith. Edith Swan. And she's kind of like a spinster. She lives with her parents, mm -hmm. and she starts receiving profane letters. So she kind of becomes the talk of the town. Of course, everyone's outraged. And her neighbor played by Jesse Buckley. Rose Gooding. She is a little foul-mouthed lady. She lives with her child and this black man she's seeing. And of course, everyone assumes it's her. And she gets arrested for it. But we find out who really is sending those letters is Olivia Coleman herself. <laughs> Why is she doing it? For attention. She has a sad little life. Yep. So how do we uh, prove that it's not Jesse Buckley? Well, first Jesse does end up going to jail, but then she gets bailed out. And then we have this woman police officer, because mm -hmm. she's not allowed to call herself just a police officer. Yeah, she's, she has to introduce herself as woman police officer, uh, Moss, uh, Gladys Moss, played by Anyana Vassan. She starts investigating, and it's through her early investigations that the audience knows, like, oh, well, Olivia's sending those letters to herself. But there's a big court trial because now other people are receiving the letters. So, like, everyone's outraged. But it's not until the woman police officer catches Olivia red-handed writing the letters that Olivia confesses. And then she's punished for the crime. Yeah. The end. But the punishment is also kind of her retribution because it gets it, her away from her vile father, played by this asshole, Timothy Spall. I, I don't know if I've ever seen him play such a nasty person. Um, you know kind of how John Goodman looks deflated? Oh. Timothy Spall kind of has that going for him now. So how is he nasty to her? He He's cruel. And uh, he makes her write Bible verses over and over again when he wants to punish her. And he, It's clear that because he's had other children and she's just the one that never left the nest, it's because they've kind of whittled her down to be kind of a live-in housemaid for them. Uh, Gemma Jones plays his wife, who dies uh, at the shock of reading one of these profane letters, which I thought was kind of funny in a subversive way. But I think uh, Olivia Coleman and Jesse Buckley both kind of make these women three-dimensional in an interesting way that's like, God, because they, they were almost friends, because. Rose is trying to be more helpful to Edith because she can see she's this woman stuck in this certain way of life. But ultimately, uh, you know, the social mores of the time, she has to kind of shrink away from Rose. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. that uh, Coleman always elevates everything and you, you start feeling really bad for her because the letter she's, she's not trying to get uh, Jesse Buckley hemmed up, but once she started writing these letters and the attention she received from them and this kind of cathartic release, she because she also gets to be, you know, this dirty, foul-mouthed thing that she can't be. She can't, she can't stop herself. Part of the reason she gets hemmed up, well, two things, right? Number one, she has a certain way of signing uh, the letter that is uh, recognizable, mm -hmm. but also the manner in which she's writing the letters would indicate that this person has an education. Yes. But Jesse Buckley's character clearly doesn't. And yes, it's not so well versed in the skills of grammar. Hearing the story made me think of Serial Mom. Oh yeah, that was my first big note on this. Uh, uh, Dottie Hinkle, played yeah. by the great uh, Mink Soul, Pussy Willow's darling. It, it is very much that, but kind of reversed. Um, Eileen Atkins is also one of the uh, town's women that is helpful towards Rose 
uh, because when she first gets locked up purely on the conjecture of Olivia Coleman saying, I think it's my neighbor, um, she can't pay her bail. So these two other women sell one of their rotten pigs and give, give her the three pounds to get out of prison. And that's when uh, things get really uh, accelerated because all of a sudden all these other people start getting letters and it reaches the ears of the prime minister and it's kind of a national scandal that's causing embarrassment. Was Olivia writing those additional letters as well? Oh yeah, she was writing all of them. Oh, so she was staying busy. She was a writing fool, yeah. Wow. Um, it was shot by Ben Davis who uh, recently did Banshees of a Sharon for, was it John Michael McDonough, also three billboards uh, outside Ebbing's, Missouri. Uh, so everything looks fine. It's just, even, even when you're reading the description of this film, the approach feels very kind of trite and like they want to, they want to make it lighthearted, but Rose is facing considerable time in a hard labor camp. In that period of time, that's ruinous. Uh, it, it, purely based on this woman accusing her of something. And and there's a lot it's really about the three women because also the women police police officers heavily demeaned and I didn't know this and I didn't do further research yet but uh, she's telling other characters that one in this period as a police woman she had to promise not to have children to get married mm. uh, so there's just obviously lots of gender dy dynamic things going on here but uh, and, and it doesn't need to I think it could keep the kind of light caustic tone. It doesn't need to be another film about the Magdalene Laundries, for instance, but I don't know. I, it just, there, there's a dimension missing that really could have made this seem uh, more meaningful than it does, because it talks about how the, this, these women were almost erased from time in this experience until, in their experiences until now. It's like, well, I wish we were left feeling more than we do. Mm. What would you give Wicked Little Letters? Um, and I did, forgot to mention that this is a reunion of uh, Buckley and Coleman who played the same character in The Lost Daughter. Um, I think if you're fans of them, this is probably must see for you. Uh, I'd say three out of five. Anything else? No. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>